Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given this circuit based on the JK flip flop, and here we have been asked to find the duty cycle of the output waveform. So as you can see over here, both the inputs of the JK flip flop are connected to the logic one, and here this clock signal is applied to both flip flops. So here the propagation delay of the two flip flops. Are 30 nanosecond and 50 nanosecond respectively, and this clock signal is applied to both flip flops. So as you can see over here, its duty cycle is equal to 50 percent, while its time period is equal to 200 nanosecond. So here, the output of these two flip flops are given to the AND gate. So basically, here we have been asked to find the duty cycle of this output waveform. So to find the output waveform. First of all, we should know that how this JK flip flop behaves. So as you know, when both inputs of the JK flip flop are one, then its output will toggle. That means currently, if this Q output is zero, then after the clock transition, it will become one. And currently, if this QN is one, then after the clock transition, it will become zero. So here, as you can see. Both G and K inputs of the two flip flops are connected to the logic one. That means in this case, after every clock transition, the output of the flip flop will toggle. So first of all, let us see the output waveform of the first flip flop. So here, this is the clock signal which is given to the flip flop, and as we know, its time period is equal to 200 nanosecond. And since the duty cycle of this clock is 50%. So its on time will be equal to 100 nanosecond. Now, if this first flip flop does not have any propagation delay, then this is how its output should look like. So here, initially we are assuming that both flip flops are reset to zero. That means now at the clock transition, its output will get toggled to one, and it will remain in that state until the next rising gauge. So once again, at the next rising gauge. Its output will become zero, and it will remain in that state until the next rising gauge. So once again, at the next rising gauge, its output will become one. So without any propagation delay, this is how the output of the flip flop should look like. But here we know that this first flip flop has the propagation delay of 30 nanosecond. That means now this output will get shifted by 30 nanosecond, and this is how. The Q output of this first flip flop will look like. Now, if we see the Q bar output, then it will be the exactly opposite of this Q output. So this output will be one of the input to the AND gate. Similarly, now let us see the output of this second flip flop. Now, similar to the first flip flop, in this second flip flop also, both G and K inputs are connected to the logic one, and therefore, at every clock transition. The output of this flip flop will toggle. So if the second flip flop does not have any propagation delay, then this is how its output will look like. That means initially its output will be zero, and at the first clock transition, its output will toggle to logic one, and it will remain in that state until the next rising gauge. So in this way, the output of the second flip flop will change. But here we also know that. The propagation delay of this second flip flop is equal to 15 nanosecond. That means this waveform will get delayed by 15 nanosecond, and this is how the output of the second flip flop will look like. So once again, now let us recall the Q bar output of the first flip flop. So now these two outputs are given to the AND gate. So now let us see the output waveform of the AND gate. So here, for our convenience. These two waveforms are extended for few more cycles. Now, as you know, the output of the AND gate will be one when its both inputs are one, and it will be equal to zero when any one of the input is zero. So, in this case, we will get the high output when its both inputs are logic one. So, as you can see over this time, then here both the inputs are logic one. That means for this duration, we will get the high pulse. Similarly, over here, if you see, then for this duration, both the inputs are high, and therefore, once again, we will get the high pulse at the end of the AND gate. Now, if you see this timing, 
and this timing is equal to 20 nanosecond because as you know the propagation delay of this second flip flop is 50 nanosecond while the propagation delay of this first flip flop is equal to 30 nanosecond that means this second flip flop is 20 nanosecond delayed by the first flip flop and therefore the pulse duration of this end gate will be equal to 20 nanosecond now if you see the output of these two flip flops then its on duration is equal to 200 nanosecond because here as you know the output of the flip flop will remain in particular state until the next rising gauge and in this case the next rising gauge will arrive after the one clock period that means if we see the output of this jk flip flop then the on time of the output waveform will be equal to 200 nanosecond and therefore if we see the clock period of this output waveform then that will be equal to 400 nanosecond or in other words the clock duration of this output wave is also equal to 400 nanosecond and here this on time of this output wave is equal to 20 nanosecond so we can say that its duty cycle is equal to the on time divided by the time period or in the percentage it can be given as this on time divided by time period times 100 percent so in this case that is equal to this 20 nanosecond divided by 400 nanosecond times 100 percent and that is equal to 5 percent so we can say that for the given circuit the duty cycle of this output wave is equal to 5 percent and therefore for the given question this is the correct answer